Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Sister of the World Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Friday, January 21st. And on this day, we celebrate St. Agnes. The Feast of Agnes has been celebrated on this day since the 4th century. Little is known about Agnes. She was likely born in the early years of the 4th century and was martyred at the age of 12 during a Roman persecution. She is a symbol of virginal innocence and has been pictured with a lamp as a symbol of this innocence since the Middle Ages. One of the 6th century legends is that Agnes was a beautiful girl with many rivals for marriage. When she rejected the proposals, she was denounced to the governor as a Christian and sent to a house of prostitution. Those who came to visit her were struck with awe. One man lost his sight while looking at her, but later regained it through her prayers. She was eventually brought before a judge, com com condemned and executed. She stands as patron saint for many people, including girls, gardeners, and engaged couples. And for the readings of the Word of God, we continue the reading of 1 Samuel, and today we will read chapter 24, verses 2 to 21, Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 57, 5, 7, and the Gospel from St. Mark, chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The man of David said to him, here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemies into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and, stith and, st and stiffly cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterward, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My Lord the King! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed his face to the ground and did basins. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This day, this very day, your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hands in the cave. And some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand. For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hand. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. But my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judged. And give sentence between me and you. May he see to you and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words, Saul said, It is 
Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you. I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week we have been reading long readings, but that tells us the story of our faith, the history of our faith, where we come from. And the Bible is so amazing that we find all sorts of people with all sorts of problems. So, None of us can say, oh, well, it's beautiful, but I do not relate to it. Oh, yes, we do relate it to it a lot. Here, once again, Saul swore, he promised that he was not going after David or to kill David. But here again, it says Saul with his army was searching for David and God gave Saul into David's hand. Once again, God knew David's heart. He knew that David would never kill Saul. But through the things that were happening, God was trying to teach a lesson to Saul too. That he chose David, but that doesn't mean that David would kill Saul. And here we see that David was hiding from Saul. Saul needed to relieve himself, as the Bible says, go to this cave and there and behold, David is there and he did not kill him. And then David gives us this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful words and call him my father. See my father, see that I was able to kill you if I wanted, but I didn't. Trust me. I don't want to be king over you. I don't want to be king of Israel killing you. And it seems that Saul heard. And he says, Is it you, my son David? Saul is an interesting character in the Bible. A one that we should study. Because he was very affectionate towards David many times. But when he felt that David was going to be the king, that David was stronger than him, they wanted to kill David. Was Saul and David, and especially, especially not only Saul towards David, the relationship was always weird. David loved Saul, calling him father, recognizing that he was the anointed king and that he would never kill the anointed king. But Saul sometimes loved David, sometimes hated David. Saul has this, if I can say, this bipolar way of living his relationship with David. Loving and hating. Loving and hating. And how many times we are like that? I'm not going to say towards one specific person. But how many times we are divided within ourselves? We have this division that we don't know if we love or we do not love. Jesus says in, in Apocalypse, St. John says in the Apocalypse, God likes the cold or the hot. The lukewarm, he will spill out of his mouth. We should not be lukewarm, it should be hot or cold. Here, Saul was sometimes hot, sometimes cold, sometimes hot, sometimes cold. Saul here was afraid of David, but David was showing that he was faithful to him until the end. David is a great example to us that even having his life uh, in threat, his life was in the brick, 
of uh, he, he was almost being killed for so many times he loved he showed so much love towards Saul love and forgiveness and understanding the responsorial psalm today says be merciful to me O God be merciful to me for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings I take refuge until the destroying storms pass by I cry to my God most high I cry to God most high to God who fulfills his purpose for me he will send his heavens and save me he will put to shame those who trample on me God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness be exalted O God above the heavens let your glory be over all the earth for your steadfast love is high as the heavens your faithfulness extends to the clouds and the gospel from St. Mark chapter 3 verses 13 to 19 says Jesus went up to the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted and they came to him and he appointed twelve whom he also named apostles to be with him and be sent out to proclaim the message to have authority to cast out demons so Jesus appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he, he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. Who betrayed him the word of the Lord thanks be to God the gospel today Jesus choose his apostles and the first verse says he called to him those whom he wanted he called to him those whom he wanted it shows us that his call does not follow and this does not follow in a specific pattern it's not understandable jesus call he calls those whom he wants and we can pause and think a little bit about it the vocation we have and most especially the vocation to the priesthood to religious life is so mysterious because he calls those whom he wants. There is no way to track God's call to say, oh yeah, this is the kind of person that Jesus calls. We do that many times. We say, oh, this little boy, he looks like a priest or this girl looks like a nun. But that's not a point. That's not how things work. God calls different people. And only from my community I can say, we are so 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 different from each other and we see priests in the parishes they are so 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 different and God called each one of them God called each one of us let's keep in mind let's keep in our hearts that he calls Jesus called to him those whom he wanted he calls to him those whom he wants is not a pattern to follow is not direct in one's life he, he calls people to follow him and as we see in the 12 apostles they, are, they were all different with different degrees of education and trades and understanding of life and paths of life but he called all of them to serve him and he's calling each one of us to serve him today Let's listen to his voice and see the way that he's calling us today. Amen. <laughs>